let f of x equal x plus 1 and g of x equal 2x. We will, for example, write fg to denote the function perform g, then perform f, so that fgx is equal to 2x plus 1. If i greater than or equal to 0 is an integer, we will, for example, write f to the i to denote the function which performs f i times. Okay, and then we have multiple things, multiple questions to answer about these functions f and g. Okay, we'll go through them one by one, but let's start with what we're given. Part one, we have to show f squared g is equal to gf. Okay, well, I think the best way to do this is just to manually compute them. f squared g of x is equal to f squared of 2x, which is equal to f of 2x plus 1, which is equal to 2x plus 2. On the other hand, g of f of x is equal to g of x plus 1, which is equal to 2x plus 2. Okay, part 1, pretty straightforward. Part 2 says, note that g f squared g of x is equal to 4x plus 4. Find all the other ways of combining f and g that result in the function result in the function 4x plus 4. Huh. So certainly um, g of g squared of f works, right, because this is g squared of x plus 1, which is g of 2x plus 2, which is 4x plus 4. And also we should have f to the 4 of g squared should work. This is f to the 4 of g of 2x, which is f to the 4 of uh, 4x, which is, well, f just adds 1 every time, right? So this is going to be 4x plus 4. Hmm. Are these the only ways? So we showed, what did we show originally? That f squared g is equal to gf. That's probably all of them, right? Because, oops, oops, come back. Okay, the example we were given is g f squared g. This gives 4x plus 4. The identity we showed from part 1 is f squared g equals gf. Okay, so... Um, I can interchange these things by, oh, maybe there is another one then. So this is going to be equal to, this is the same as GFFG, which is equal to F squared GFG. Yeah, you know, doing the computation in my head of actually substituting an x here shows that this does work. Um, are there any other combinations? If I interchange this G and F, 
If I interchange those, I'm going to get that. So g squared f, if I start with that one, Yeah, I get, I get this back. Um, so I think it's really just a question of, you know, starting with this, where f is all the way in the right and g is all the way in the left, and then just passing f, interchanging g and f according to this relation uh, in all the possible ways that we can. Right? If we start with g squared f, we get g f squared g, but that's the, that's what was given to us. And then we can interchange f and g again and get that. And do it again and get that. So I think all the ways are g squared f is equal to g f squared g is equal to f squared g f g is equal to f to the 4 g squared. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, it'll be possible to find another one there. Okay. Um, the next part says i, j, and k are integers greater than or equal to 0. Determine the function f to the i g, f to the j g, f to the k x. So I want to do something that I did uh, similar to what I did previously and sort of push all of the f's and g's to one side if possible. Now, if we have a g to the left of an f like this, we can always bring the f in front. We just have to add an exponent like that. I suppose you'll double the exponent. Um, whatever the exponent is here, you can double it. But you can't always do the opposite, right? If you have, if this were an odd exponent, we wouldn't necessarily be able to bring it over there. So, f i g f j g f to the k is equal to f i g f j plus 2 k g, which is equal to f to the i plus 2j plus 4k g squared. And if I now substitute x, this is f i plus 2j plus 4k of 4x. So this just gives 4x plus i plus 2j plus 4k. Yeah. And again, this, you know, th th this would have been, um, I'm not sure exactly what it would have done on this one if we hadn't done the previous parts of this question and understand the commutativity relation between, or the commuting relation, how to interchange f and g. Okay, there's one final part of this problem. Let m greater than zero be an integer. How many different ways of combining the functions f and g are there that result in the function 4x plus 4m? Oh, interesting. So I suppose we're just looking for the number of combinations of of i plus 2j plus 4k, of i, j, and k, such that this sum 
is equal to m. Um, but I want to go back for a second and plus four. I want to make sure that we did in fact get all of the combinations here. Okay. So yeah, like the the answer to this, it's it's clear that because of the four x, there's only going to be two. The, the power on g is going to be only two. It can't be higher or lower, because f only adds to the input. It doesn't multiply it by anything. So we want i plus two j plus four k is equal to m. Oh, sorry. Not equal to m, equal to 4m. This makes it easier. This makes it a lot easier because clearly if we ignore i and j, we need k equal m. I think there's going to be something about the binomial uh, binomial representation of m here or something like that. Or not, not that. It's going to be about the number of times we can divide m by 2. So k equals m works. k equals m minus 1 and j equals 2 works. can kind of see what's happening. I'm, I'm having trouble explaining exactly. Um, I mean, so if I, J, K works, then I, j plus 2 and k minus 1 also works. Like if I subtract 1 from k, I can add 2 to j or add 4 to i. And if I subtract 1 from j, I have to add 2 to i. Is it better to think of it the other way around? Like i is equal to 4m is clearly a combination that works. I have to decrease i. If I decrease i by 2, maybe the best way to think about this is fix k then how many possible results are there? As of how many possible combinations are there for a fixed k? And then add those up for all possible values of k. Wait, it's okay. So if k is equal to m, that's zero. Both i and j have to be zero. Uh, 
if k is m minus 1, then this is 1, this is 4, we need j to be equal to 2, 1, or 0. So there's three ways of doing that. Oh, this should be a 1. Of course, there's only one combination. Yeah. Okay. If the right-hand side is equal to 8, j must be 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0. Yeah, okay, so we can see now what the what the answer is going to be. It's going to be the sum as um, n goes from 0 to m of what? one plus two n, right? So I get that the answer is m plus one squared. Uh, I mean, I might have made an algebra mistake or something like that, but the, the thought process here, I believe, works. There might be a more straightforward way of seeing this, but let me again sort of walk through what's going on. We're looking for integer combinations positive of i, j, and k such that this holds. And the way I'm thinking about it is let's fix a possible value of k and find out how many combinations of i and j will work for that value of k and then add those up over the number of values of k that could possibly work. So it's easier to see when it's written like this, but the right hand side is always a multiple of four. So I, if I want to, I can let j, I, I can let I can let i be equal to zero if I want to. Um, just by choosing j such that it, it's equal to that. And then if I fix the right hand side. I can lower j by 1 and increase i by 2. And the number of times I can do that, the number of times I can lower j by 1, is going to be able to, is going to be whatever the right hand side is divided by 2. Um, yeah, so I mean, th this pattern is definitely going to continue. Uh, and then we're just adding up all of these numbers for all possible values of k. So there we go. Um, unless I made some silly, you know, indexing error or algebra mistake or something like that, I'm pretty sure this is the answer. M plus one squared. If I find a mistake though, if this or if this isn't the correct answer, then I'll put it down in the description. Thanks for watching.